live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Inforum DC 2018. Brought to you by Infor. Yeah. Well, we are back here at Inform 2018 in Washington, D.C. John Walls and Dave Vellante. We are in the nation's capital and joined right now by uh, Massimo Capoccia, who is uh, SVP of uh, InfoOS, and uh, Rick Ryder, product director at, uh, for Coleman at Inform. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Good Thank to see you both. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, let's talk first off, uh, good job, by the way, Rick, oh, on the thanks. keynote stage this morning. Uh, you had some time to shine out there. Uh, your thoughts about the show in general so far? We've been a couple of days in now. How's it going for you? Yeah, very, very well. Um, the customers has received the InfoOS and the technology innovation and what we do with the AI, uh, very, very well. Um, you know, a lot of people in the in the in the hub, um, lots of sessions, so lots of interest on the on the technology innovation for uh, for InfoOS and for Info as well. Sure, Rick, for you. Yeah, it's um, it's been great. It's been interesting. What we're finding out is uh, getting a lot of this out in front of customers and partners is bringing up some interesting opportunities for us moving forward. So it's not, it's not every day we get the opportunity to get in front of these many people uh, within our network, so it's, it's been great. It's been so what are you hearing from folks? When you talk, start talking about AI, especially those who, who maybe don't know, haven't embraced it yet, um, what are the I don't know, hesitations, reservations? I mean, what are you hearing from them that, as far as uh, what's going to trigger them to make a decision? Yeah, to, to be honest, I think um, they've been hesitant in the past just because it hasn't really been clear. When we've talked about AI in the technology community, it's been hard to define. Um, some people might, um, in fact, define it incorrectly because we're making assumptions about what technology can and can't do. Um, I think what we're uncovering, I feel we've got a pretty unique approach to what we're doing here with N4OS and Coleman connected to it. Um, we're working directly with customers to identify use cases on how we can apply AI, rather than just starting at the top and saying, hey, we should be doing all these, all these great things and let's see how we can make it work for our customers. It's kind of we're, we're flipping the script and starting backwards and saying, hey, what are the issues, what are the opportunities that customers have? How can we build the technology using AI to make it meaningful so we have business impact day one? Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I think it's a lot more understandable, it's a lot more relatable, it's a lot more trustable uh, from our customers. We um, certainly in the cube here watched and observed the ascendancy of the hype around so-called big data, um, and which is sort of moderated now. Um, but data is plentiful; insights aren't, and so we've sort of come to the conclusion that the the innovation recipe, if you will, for the next decade or so is data applying machine intelligence to that data and having cloud to be able to scale it, having cloud economics be able to track innovation. You guys seem to have all three. Yeah. Of those pieces, right? But AI without the data is just, I don't know what it is, right? Yeah, exactly. Data without the ability to extract you know, insights, what good is it? Right. Yeah. And yeah. you got to have cloud to scale it. Your thoughts on, yeah. from a platform perspective, what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So I was seeing the, the interview that you were doing with, uh, with Charles is we build out this platform from the beginning. And one of the big element is that we have, um, you know, made it possible to synchronize, you know, real time all this data that the application generates into a single place called the data lake. Um, so when you have the, the data in data lake, then you can do many, many things. And uh, not only analytics, and reporting, which is the classical use case, but now it allows you to do uh, AI. And the difference is that we don't have one domain of the data, so some of the vendors have only CRM data or HCM data or uh, financial data. With Info, we have all different domains of data, so we can go from HCM, from financials, to asset management, to IoT readings of IoT devices, um, to ERP and, uh, and CRM it's, it's, um, uh, uh, also. So, when you combine, when you can cross uh, and combine in the relationship with this data, then your AI is much more smarter, intelligent. When you have only the AI focus on a domain, it's less intelligent. So that's actually the power that we do. And our Coleman will uh, take advantage of that, you know, that you know, rich data lake. And, the, and, and okay, and we talked a lot to Soma earlier about the stack. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the bottom layer is the OS. Yes. You know, and so everybody's familiar with what an operating system does in, in, in computer science. 
How is your OS similar and different? What's the what is the function that it does? If we could double click on that. Yeah, so we uh, it's it's in for operating service and we call it a service because it's actually not in the database and operating system level, right? right? So we believe we are more in the application technology. We are the layer that um, takes you know the bare technology and makes it usable for a business uh, for an enterprise, and we build applications on top of on top of it. So what we believe at the for when you have an architecture with us, uh, is composite of a suite of application, or even the new microservice architecture that developers built, um, you still have to deliver a uniform user experience, a uniform business process, uniform security and data management, a and even AI. Um, so if you look at uh, you know services like Facebook or Netflix, they have maybe entire microservice architecture, thousands of that, but the experience is one. Right. That's we want to bring it to the enterprise. The Info has bring that unified experience, both from the end user and the business process, uh, to the enterprises, and and we do it for all the cloud suites. Info OS is all the cloud suites, not just one, but all of them, the same services. So I love the Netflix example mm -hmm. because if you think about digital, digital transformation, you know, digital business. My experience with Netflix is just with Netflix. I don't have a, there's no marketing department, sales department, service right. department. I just have a problem, I go to Netflix, I go to my app, and I interact with yeah, the app. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, I consider that, a, let's call it a product. So Rick, how does this capability get <laughs> translated into product? Yeah, um, you know, one thing that you brought up a lot earlier is, is uh, with all this interconnectivity and how we have to package things. So we've got all these different services that OS offers. So we've got the data lake, we've got the API gateway, we've got the integration platform and ION. All those pieces is what bring this together to where we can actually deliver something to our customers. In my case, it's an AI model or it's RPA because of all these things are packaged together. Yeah. So they don't actually see what's happening because it's already packaged for them. Mm. Okay, so what I was saying to Charles, you probably you might have seen it, is when we first discovered Infor, it was like, huh, what do you guys do? And it wasn't clear um, exactly what you guys were doing, but he said, and I believe him, it was always our vision to have a platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that the, 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 it's not opaque anymore. The, the platform is pretty clear. Now you've added the Burst Analytics, you've added Coleman AI on top of that. So, you know, Andy Jassy at AWS always talks about the flywheel effect. So I suspect that you're entering this flywheel phase. What is that phase? What does it kind of mean for you guys, for customers in terms of innovation? Yeah, it's a very good question. I, so actually, I worked for years with Soma. We started with this platform, this journey, and with Charles. And we start really with, uh, okay, what's the first the first issue? You know, we want to solve the integration problem, so we want to give an integration platform. Then we, we build that. Then we start to say, okay, we want to unify the experience. We build a unified portal with a single sign-on. Then we say, okay, we want to unify the data. We build a data lake. So we continue to build out the platform. We are now at the level, we have a platform, and it, it's a unique platform because you can say it fits in one magic quadrant because, it, yeah, it does the I-pass and the pass, so all these magic quadrants but it doesn't fit in one, it fits in all of them, right? So, and, and the analyst looks at that and say, okay, we have a platform that doesn't fit in one, it fits in all of them, right? <laughs> yeah, the magic quadrant is now becoming outdated because exactly. the cloud is, like, like you said, it's, it, it's, it, 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 it can don't it, need 15 stovepipes. You know, exactly. It's the stovepipe thinking is the magic exactly. quadrant. You know, so with the, all due respect to my friends at Gartner. <laughs> <laughs> but the flywheel is, yeah, the platform <laughs> is going to become more and more important, relevant. The customers that you know are in the cloud or not, or not in the cloud, they will use the platform to get to the cloud. It's, it's going to be a new enabler for those customers that are still on premises to go to the cloud. We, the InfoOS is enabler for a hybrid process. So some, some application can be in the on-premises or in the cloud. With the OS, they can take the journey and get to the cloud at their own place. Let me sure I understand that. So architecturally, you don't care? We don't okay. care where the applications are. Okay, but you've certainly done a lot of work to optimize AWS. You know, we're an AWS customer, and we know it's, it's not trivial. You have to, you know, you got to work it. It's, it's, it's simple, developers love it, but to really take advantage of it, integrate it with your processes, it'll take some work. But architecturally, you don't care. Uh, but it's not, that's not a that's not an offering statement, is it? I mean, t today, can I run that multi-cloud? Run your software anywhere? Are people well, doing that? 
Well, today we have a mix of, we use open source library, uh, but we do use, uh, utilize AWS. The data lake is built on S3. Um, on AI, we use Lex or uh, SageMaker for the, the training of the models. Uh, so we do a lot, a lot of AWS because it gives you our computing power and, uh, and it's out of the box solution for certain, certain pieces. What we do, we, we build the interfaces to our applications so that our customers doesn't need to take care of all the plumbing, it's all interconnected and done. So that's, that's one of the power of InfoRes, it brings that application technology layer between the business application and the, you know, the basic you know, technology. And the customer doesn't even want to think about the plumbing these days, right? right. Uh, to, to most customers, infrastructure is irrelevant. Y you know, again, apologies to my hardware friends, but they don't <laughs> care about hardware, right? I mean, yeah. uh, it's interesting, Charles said in the keynote uh, yesterday, <coughs> when we were an on-prem software company, we didn't manage servers for our, our customers. You know, the customers de didn't care really about the server any more than they care about the plumbing today, right? Right, yeah, and, and if I want to relate that to the AI space, all the training, all the science, all the, the highly computational things that we have to do, customers don't really want to know what that means or how to yeah. use that. So what we're actually doing is in, in conjunction with some of the AI services we're working with with AWS, is we've built a modeling platform to where they're operating in one location. They've got no concept of where this is hosted, what's going on behind the scenes. And then we connect it, we expose an API, and they can do any sort of RP RPA that they want to. You know, so, I mean, you're talking about, when you talk about your customers and, and they don't care about you know, what's behind the curtain, they just want to handle maybe something up front. But yet, um, you have to understand what they can do, right? Or you have to understand their potential. So how do you do that when you're dealing with different companies, different sizes, different priorities, different challenges, there are different technology uh, stages? How do you all address them individually and help them get to that better place? You want to take that on the, uh, the modeler? Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, you know, it's never a one size fits all, right? Um, so we try to give them what we've called citizen developer tool sets in the past, and I've even started to try to say citizen data science yeah. uh, tool sets, so how can we make it more consumable by all types of users? Mm -hmm. So yes, we can provide templates, we can create these things that might work somewhat out of the box, but each one of these customers, their data is, is just slightly different, they need to make tweaks, um, so we really want to be able to you know, provide all that flexibility, and it gets back to, we start with their use cases, and then we build from there. So we get all that feedback and make sure we're, make, we're hitting those key points. So I want to pick up on something you said about citizens, citizen data scientists. I've used that term before, in front of data scientists. Some of them don't like it, right? Because yeah. they feel like it denigrates the, what they do. And it's true, a data scientist is a math whiz, maybe a stats whiz, they're a data hacker, they can code, you know, okay. <laughs> and that's not every business person, <laughs> right. clearly. However, when you think about things like RPA, I mean, you really want to enable business users. Exactly. You don't want to repeat the same problem that we had for years with things like decision support where you had two people in the company that knew how to build a cube. Exactly. And you had to have line up with, and ask, please can you build my cube, I have a deadline. Well, everybody else does too. It just it wasn't effective. So things like RPA and low code citizen data scientists spread that technology throughout. Yeah. Now, Part of that is having a platform that is, uh, I vision a studio, where as a user I can actually create some kind of process and c code that in software, you know, code it. I, something that's repetitive that I don't have to do every day. I do it every day, I do it the same way. Somebody gave the example, it might have been Soma, or maybe somebody else, expense report uh, approval. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've never not approved an expense report. And I don't crack them open and look at it. I mean, maybe every now and then somebody does. Somebody does, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so don't I, get any ideas I, here. I always push the approval button, right? <laughs> why couldn't, why can't a robot do that and look for anomalies and say, oh, uh, a $300 scotch, that's a lot of the ordinary. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. So, so <laughs> is that a, a capability that you're working on, that you have today, that what I'm envisioning a studio, and then I imagine there's got to yeah. be some orchestrator? Uh, yeah, so if you look at throughout all InfoOS, it's completely model driven. So either you, you build a, uh, an integration or a workflow or a, an AI model, or a, even we have a, a platform as a service, Mongoose, where you build with low code applications. So you can take it to end to end where you, you, you train models in AI, you expose it as an API, you can build your own app on top of it with low code, and then you know, give it to your business users. Very, very simple and uh, in the cloud, you know, uh, in the browser, and uh, you can do, every customer can do it. 
Um, so that's very important for us. We, we work from the beginning with this model uh, to give you know, the tools to everybody, not to only an elite of people that can do and then you know, there is the rest of the people that cannot do it. Every new computer science engineer that comes out gets you know, AI um, out of the box. When I did computer science, yeah, I got some AI, you know, but it was not really like today. So every, everybody can program AI now and we want to give these tools to every developer and not just went to an elite. Yeah, and the workflow prediction model that you've been talking about, if you want to come join us down there, we've actually got a model that we're working on for that exact use case right now. Oh, cool, now. yes. Um, so yeah, giving, giving, giving the ability for those business users, as you say, to, it's almost like lowering the barrier to entry to a lot of this yep. AI technology. It's not devaluing or anything data science, because we've got those advanced tool sets to where if you want to do something in our studio, bring it over into the Coleman AI platform, you certainly can, we're not devaluing that, but, you know what, if we want to start and take little bites off and you want to give this in the hands of the business users, we've got a great solution for that. So this is all the cool stuff. This is the stuff that business users care about. I mean, do they, by, by, still have a, my question is, do people care about what's under the covers? I mean, are they asking you, well, what's in the database and how does this work, how does that work? Or do they just really want to focus on that functionality that they're getting in the business impact? Yeah, with the advent of the cloud, you know, people just, those questions like which you know, operating system database, which technology you use, it, it, it just went away, right? So uh, people just want to know the functionality and the value. Um, you know, maybe there are companies that have more, you know, an IT uh, architects and they want to know more, you know, that's what they want to go down into the details, then you go into the architecture of the OS, of the application, and we integrate with AWS. So we do that as well. We, uh, we, we you know, we talk to the customers about that. Uh, but most of them, they just want to know, okay, how can I use this platform to make my business better, right? So it runs the cloud seed, but I, now I can connect to other cloud services, I can connect to other application, I can build my own app and bring it in. So they want that business value immediately. And that's why we built this in for OS, so that they can run the cloud suite and add business value. Yeah, you guys at last year's analyst meeting gave a little glimpse of some of the architecture and and uh, it was very useful. Actually, analysts love that kind of stuff. I, I, I didn't get the invite this year. Uh, maybe some of, the, some of the smarmy questions I asked. <laughs> but, uh, but I found that actually quite impressive yeah. in terms of the tech behind it yes. and the R&D that you guys are doing there. But ultimately, it comes down to what products you can build and what business impact it has, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think where we're heading with this, we, we really don't have many limitations for what we're seeing right now. We're built in a way to where you can apply to every single industry, every single cloud suite. We have the unique um, you know, possibility to where we can go through all these different industries and create this sort of value. So it, we've got a very unique future ahead of us. So, yeah, so how much better? Or, or can you give us an idea of the roadmap a little bit about where you think Coleman can go? Yeah, so we're starting to play in the image recognition space a little bit. Yeah. Um, maybe looking at how we can utilize things like drone technology and do uh, inspection reports, those sort of things. It's maybe, uh, and, and at least my opinion, I think others kind of express the same. It's maybe the least developed area and we want to make sure we have something that works for customers the way that they're going to see value immediately. Um, but also we're starting to look at edge AI. Um, yeah. So how can, not necessarily just an IoT, but how can, we, how can we build something in the cloud? How can we create a model? then deploy that for our on-prem customers who aren't quite ready so that they can get that AI experience as well and that, pr that predictive insight. Hmm. It's dvellante at siliconangle.com, is that right, your email? <laughs> for the invitation. David.vellante. <laughs> David.vellante, <laughs> so just make sure. So we'll, we'll exchange information <laughs> later. <laughs> we'll <laughs> invite you. <laughs> I, I'm sure this is not your territory. But, uh, <laughs> All right, gentlemen. It's on me. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for the time. We appreciate that. Back with more here from Washington, D.C. right after this, you're watching theCUBE.